Well, it's time to do injectors in the John Deere. Now, John Deere has been using these same pencil style injectors for many years across various different engines. So this process will be basically the same if you have a pencil style injector for your engine, whether it's three, four, six cylinder. Now the injectors I'll be doing this on in particular are in a 310D backhoe with the 4039T engine. So on this engine, we got a turbo in the way. So consider yourself lucky if you don't have a turbo, but we're gonna be working around it. Let's get started. First, you're gonna wanna clean around all the injectors real good, just with some bright clean and compressed air. We don't want any debris or anything falling down on the cylinders when we yank these injectors out. Next step is we're gonna take off all these fuel return pipes between the injectors. This will take, in this application, a 9 16 wrench. Now to actually remove the line, all you need to do is just twist these to the side like that. Let me show you again. These just twist really easy. Then you can pop the lines out. Okay, all our lines are off. Now this is your actual return line. It goes back, so that's gonna have to stay there. We'll work around it. It's not really too much in the way. On these back two injectors, since I'm limited on room here, I went ahead and pulled the T out. Now the T's come off the same way as the lines here. Uh, just these take a 5 8 wrench rather than the 9 16 but then they just pull right off. So you can do that if you need the room. Next step is we're going to be pulling all the injector lines off. Now I'm not going to pull them off the pump. I'm only going to dis disconnect them here at the injector. Now you should, if they're still there, have some isolators between the lines that you'll want to remove to be able to move them. Uh, on this engine it looks like they're missing, so I won't deal with that I guess. Three quarter wrench, and it shouldn't take much pressure. All the lines off. Now I have went ahead and zip tied the injector lines back against the exhaust manifold just to get a little extra clearance. So next step is we pull out the injector hold down bolts. These are half inch or a 13 millimeter will work. All right, now time to actually pull the injectors out. I went ahead and pulled the back one because I knew it was going to be the worst. But for the video, let's do one of these easy ones. Now it's time to put on your patient hat because you really do not want these to snap off in the head. So just a little bit of uh, pressure. Don't get carried away. If you have the space, which we don't, and if you also have the money, which we don't, you could buy a special slide hammer that would pop these things right out. But we're not going to do that. We're going to use what we got. So get your pry bar, get your heel bar, and let's start working. The first step, we want to wiggle the injector, twist it like this in the bore to help break it, break it loose. Now just for reference, this engine is a 1992 with 5,000 hours on it. So depending on your hours and age, your injectors might be harder to take out or easier. So I've wiggled this thing side to side a bunch. Now I got my heel bar wedged in here. I'm just going to start putting a little bit of pressure upwards and rocking the injector back and forth. If you're having a lot of issues, you might soak this all down with some WD-40. Let it sit a week if you have the time. After roughly five minutes of wiggling and prying, there it is. Let me see if I can get you another shot of where to actually put the pry bar. We're going to repeat that for all the cylinders. Now depending on which cylinder it is, like the farther ones back, a pry bar tends to work better than the heel bar. So just use whichever fits best and just remember to go slow. Now if you seem to have one stuck like this one is, 
it's best to, rather than focus on pulling up, focus on just twisting the injector in its bore. I'll demonstrate. All right, so all of our injectors are out. Now we want to take a vacuum, or if you have a suction gun, and just go around the edges of where these things seal to pick up any debris. If you're really in a pinch, you can use a rag, but it would be better to use a vacuum. And for reference, three of the injectors, it took about five minutes a piece to pull. And then the one stuck injector, I spent at least 20 to 30 minutes on. So keep that in mind if you run into one that's stubborn. Now to build our vacuum, just sneak the vacuum out of the house while the wife's gone. Get you a little bit of rubber hose or about anything will work that's smaller. You can stick that like that. Got some tape. There we have it. Straight out of the Tinker Tool catalog. Now on more modern injection systems, you'll need to evacuate fuel from inside the cylinder, but on these old pencil style injectors, no fuel actually falls down in the cylinder when you pull the injector out. So no need to suck the cylinders dry. So we have our new injectors. So we just want to compare these to the old and make sure everything looks the same. I'm using aftermarket injectors, so that's uh, you want to spend a little extra time if you're doing the same. And also make sure that the injector seals are installed when you receive your items. You never know in shipping uh, a seal might slip off or something, you just don't want to assume. Our injectors look good. And a note on the old injectors, if you're trying to diagnose a misfire or something, you want to make sure you lay out your old injectors in order and just inspect them. So you want to look for any excess carbon or anything. I've already looked at all four of my injectors and there is no issue. Now before you install these injectors, you want to put just a really light coat of anises. That way you or the next guy don't have to fight these things coming out. And we want to stay away from putting anything on the tip. You want to make sure as you're installing the injector that this clamp lines up with the fuel line right here. Like that. Now it can slide off to the side. So the injector kind of want to go in a twisting motion. Just like this as you go down. And just go till it seats. Next step is we want to start all four of our hold down bolts. Now tighten these bolts down until the injectors are fully seated, then just back it off about a quarter turn. Now we're going to hand tighten all the high pressure injector lines to the actual injector. Now go back and tighten all the injector hold down bolts. If you're looking for a torque spec, about like this. That's the best I got for you. Now tighten up the high pressure lines with your three quarter. Now you don't have to get crazy tight on these. Just fairly tight. As you can, distort the ceiling surface of the line. Now your return lines will have these rubber seals on the ends that you'll want to replace. In a pinch you can reuse them, but it's not fun to do this job twice. So you just pull those off. The new seals will come in a pack. You'll have to buy them separate from your injectors. And they just slide on, just like that. Also, don't forget to pull the plug out of your old number one injector. This will also have one of those seals on it to replace. And you don't have to go crazy tight on these nuts here. All right, double check that all your tools are clear. We're getting ready to crank the engine. Now, normally, if this is all we've had apart in the fuel system, it usually starts pretty easy. But sometimes, if it doesn't start very easy, we're going to have to crack these high pressure lines. But we're going to try it first.
I just make sure and run your engine quite a while to make sure there's no fuel leaks. The high pressure lines, if they're really old, have a bad tendency of leaking. And that's all for today. Hope this helps someone.